Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program Quest for All Probe Science series. So in this I am starting a series in which I will be trying to collect every single science that is available with the exception of using Kerbals. Uh, so as you can see I'm going to be calling this a uh, Quest for All Probe Science. Uh, here's my favorite flag, the orbit sign. I'm going to be doing the science career mode and I'll be keeping the difficulty on the standard normal settings. Um, so with this I do have the realism overhaul mods uh, the package that comes with CCAN I off the top of my head the only extra mods that I have is I do have Kerbal alarm clock in which you can see up here in the top left and I have Kerbal construction time uh, as you can see uh, here um, here's the tech life support. I think I'm good with that. So for the preset uh, for Kerbal construction time, I will just be using the default preset and I'll not be changing anything with that. And for spending my upgrades, all I'm going to do is just sink all of my points into actually building the rocket so that way I can get them onto the launch pad as quickly as I can. And I'll right now uh, I'm not I don't plan on putting any points into research and development just because I'm not really too concerned on that it develops the science at a pretty reasonable time so uh, let's get started with our first rocket um, I also have the FASA part pack installed uh, other than that I don't believe I have any extra mods installed so for this, uh, here's going to be our first probe that we will be using. And I'm going to just be calling this simply uh, Alpha 1. And then any variation with the different probe bodies that I have, I'm just going to be calling them. So this is Alpha 1. And if I add some more science to this, then it's going to be Alpha 2, Alpha 3, so on and so forth. But as soon as the rocket starts undergoing some major changes, then that is when I will incorporate anything extra or it's good then I'm going to move on to Beta then Charlie then Delta and pretty much just work my way through the phonetic alphabet and just see how many rocket variations I will undergo. So for the first rocket I think I'm just going to be building something relatively simple um, with this. Um, I'm going to also have the liquid uh, liquid fuel engine to get us going and I think I will need let's see that's going to, have to be a cone let's increase the top to there and for the engine I'm going to be using this NAA 75 110 series uh, this is a pretty good engine uh, especially starting off uh, I do wish I had some of the other parts uh, that I, I think I don't know if they used to come with FASO or if I just don't have the mods installed but uh, this I am very happy with this engine and its performance there we go let's there we go let's see thrust to weight ratios at 1.2 I still need to add some science to this and I believe all we have is the mystery goo containment units so I'm just going to put those on there with a six times symmetry and I think all I need now is just a decoupler or to get the ball rolling from the launch pad. There we go, the Redstone and Juno launch clamp. Oop, a little glitch there. There we go. Let me just correct this staging and just to make this rocket a little prettier I'm just going to change the texture to the redstone stripes. Yes, I know this isn't a, um, not a very good redstone rocket, but uh, as far as the original one, no idea what actually went into that, but I um, think this will be good for our first rocket, or first rocket design. So I'm going to go ahead and build two of these guys and get these underway. Yep, save and continue. And let's see how much science we can collect in these first two launches. Uh, I think once I go ahead and build these two rockets I'll go ahead and then invest into some more science because these are both going to build at the same time and then just need to wait for the reconditioning of the launch pad in order to really uh, start getting any more but maybe I could start grinding out some more science so I'll do some stuff but not too much 
think for this first rocket, I'm also going to just go ahead and warp to daytime. All right, let's delete that first alarm. Warp to morning. And let's see the beautiful sunrise. There we go. And let's go ahead and launch our first Alpha 1 rocket. So I think for this, I'm going to try and cover as many biomes as I can. I'm going to first, I'm going to launch heading north, and then I'm going to send another rocket south to see if I can get some of the uh, shores, the water, and the grasslands, and hopefully uh, head down south to South America to get some tropic. So I'm going to go ahead, set the heading to minus five, and launch. There we go. Let's execute that. And let's go Geiger counter. And I'm going to start transmitting everything, and then I'll be able to start collecting all the science once I can actually recover this. But this will be good to get us going in the beginning. We've got lots of science here. This is perfect. And I believe I can only just get two of each for each biome for right now. Yep, sure can. There we go. I'm going to just try and get this thing and start heading this thing up north and uh, see how far we can go and hopefully I can get most of the way. If this thing can get all the way up to the North Pole that would be perfect because then I can get most of the biomes other than I believe the mountains and let's see in the highlands although I might be able to reach the highlands that's on the west coast of the US. Uh, oh so one thing I forgot to mention I will be launching all of my rockets from Cape Canaveral so I've got a lot of practice with launching from Cape Canaveral just because that's the standard launch site for realism overhaul I believe um, I'm not going to change it to any other site even though yes if I want a polar orbit I need to pick a more northern uh, launch site somewhere uh, maybe at the Cosmodrome but for this I'm not really too worried about designing rockets uh, especially just to get around orbit for Earth and even getting to the moon and getting to Mars and getting to uh, Venus is uh, relatively easy. Um, it's just a matter of, uh, so for those I'm not really too concerned, but getting to uh, other planets is when it's going to be a little bit tricky because there's a lot of maneuver nodes and a lot of editing to do. Uh, I'm also going to have to start setting up a good relay system so that way I can actually get some communication because I actually haven't had much practice with remote tech uh, setting up a good uh, maybe geo uh, was it all the geostationary uh, satellites so that way I can keep good communication I don't really have any relays that I set now to interplanetary space um, I'm actually not sure if that cuts down on the delay timer but normally whenever I play I just just deal with it and I'll just have the um, computer take care of everything all the automatic flight. There we go, let's transmit data, and it looks like I'm getting uh, my apoapsis is more than enough to. Uh, there you go. Oh, yeah, it's more than high. Definitely get into space. I'm just going to go ahead, collect this science, and I think I can get one more. Nope, and that's it. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm just got to wait for a new biome. So at the last few seconds, I'm just going to go ahead and spin stabilize this. I know I can use rockets, but to keep it down on part count, I'm just going to use, I'm just going to spin stabilize with the fins. There we go. Got a little stabilization. Separate, and let's launch these next three stages. Hmm. Getting some lag, even with this small rocket. That's okay. There we go. It looks like, oh, Apoapsis is getting up there. A little too high. I was hoping to get it a little lower so that way I can uh, manage to hopefully travel a little further. So let's see where we are in the map view. And oh, wow, that went a lot further than I thought it was going to. So we should be able to get some science above there if we can transmit it. I'm not really too worried about that. There we go. Some more science over the water. There we go. Transmit. And. Go ahead and collect two more and transmit these two. Yeah, I think I missed some. Oh, now we're over the grasslands. Perfect. And it looks like I am out of mystery goo containers. Ah, that's all right. There we go. I've got more rockets I can launch. 
I'm just going to go ahead and time warp this so that way I can go ahead and collect some more from, from more biomes. Earth shore, I've already got that. Earth grasslands, got that. So now I'm really hoping that I can get up over the uh, over the poles if I can, and if I'm lucky, I should be able to. There we go, I got the poles, but unfortunately I am not in range of anywhere to transmit, so I'm going to have to increase my orbit a lot higher so I can get communication with these sites here. And it looks like I'm not going to be able to make it in time. So yeah, see by the red there, I'm not going to be able to make it. And there we go. I think this was a very successful first launch. Just gotta wait for this to burn up in the atmosphere and say goodbye to our first probe. So hopefully I'll be able to recover these and actually get all the signs that I could possibly need. Let me go ahead and exit that so it doesn't time warp. Let's hurry up and get rid of this first rocket. Hmm. I love the purple glow from the mystery goo containers. Oh, and there we go. Alright, that was perfect. Now it's time to launch Alpha 2. So, since I don't have any communication with the poles, I'm going to continue south and hopefully I can get something from the tropics from South America, if I can get that. Cover some random debris there, and let's roll this out. And of course I have to wait to recondition the launch pad. Exit that, so I can time warp. And there we go. Oh, and it looks like we'll get to launch this during the day, too, which is very nice. Do, 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 do. And let's launch Alpha 2, rocket number 2. And hopefully we can get lots of good science from this. So I think I've already covered. I've got the grasslands. I've got the shores. I've got the water. So I guess really all I'm shooting for is just uh, maybe something over the tropics. So for this, I will need to head south, which is going to be at 270 degrees. Let's execute that already, and let's launch. There we go, execute again, just in case. And just in case I messed up my heading, I'm just gonna start to roll over already. Yep, I went the wrong way. So I actually need to go to heading 180. Let's execute there. <laughs> well, I guess 180 is opposite of zero, so I need to head south, so that was a dumb mistake, but it's alright, I'm heading some in the right direction to correct the orbit. Or correct the uh, orbital trajectory that I've got to de counter. So let's see, the orbit, yeah, it's over there. So that's actually not too bad, so I do want to kind of aim this way, so which about 185 would actually be a good target. And so for this, since this uh, first stage is enough to kick this rocket into a very high suborbital trajectory, uh, high being above 200,000 meters, so I'm going to attack this gravity turn a little bit more aggressively. There we go, got a little bit of lag there, some dynamic pressure up there, and let's check out what FAR has to say. Well, it says nominal, so I guess I don't really have too much to worry about. Let's start kicking this rocket over a little bit more. There we go. Looks like the atmospheric density is really cutting down, so I can now start turning this very aggressively if need be, which is exactly what I will be doing. And so hopefully by the time that this stage cuts out, I'm going to aim for around 140 kilometers. go starting to pick up some decent speed surface at a thousand so there we go all right and this one's looking a lot cleaner than the last launch I don't like it when the launches aren't too clean especially when I want to do a direct transfer to the moon without having to change up a whole lot all right There we go. So even if I undercut it just a bit, I'm not going to be too upset. There we go. I'm just going to leave that at 10 degrees. I think that'll work just fine. Actually, nope. I'm, that looks like it's definitely going down. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that at zero. 
And there we go. So I'm getting ready when I hit about three seconds. I'll start doing my little spin stabilization. And hopefully get this into, uh, let's get some good science. All right, up over the grassland and get ready to rotate. There we go. No, oh, it's much faster this time round. There we go. And next one. And it looks like, oh wow, over 200 kilometers. That's a lot more. So I actually should have attacked that gravity turn quite a bit more aggressively. I'll know that next time if I decide to reuse this rocket, which I think I will once I unlock some more science. And there we go. So we've got a nice spin stabilized probe, which at this point doesn't really matter because we're too high up. And we are on our way to a very fast Caribbean flight. Let's see where we're going. Will this make it to the South Pole? Nope, nowhere near. Ah, and actually, I did not think about this. I headed the wrong way. I wanted to be aiming over here. I need to learn my geography a little bit more. <laughs> So I should have aimed, let's see if that's 180, that's closer to 90, so I should have headed uh, over in that direction, closer to, hmm, yeah. Oh boy, alright, well, let's hope I can actually get something from this anyway. Oh, so there's the grasslands, so maybe there's a tiny chance, because I can't remember the biome, maybe I'll hit something on this little this little stretch of land here. Maybe I can get some highlands, that'd be fantastic. Alright, there's the shores. And what else we got? Tropics, there we go, hit the jackpot. Alright, that turned out to be a whole lot better than I had anticipated. However, I have no communication. Well, this was a failed launch. I'm glad no one in uh, Glad there's no money invested. Well, all right, I'm going to go ahead and head back to the Space Center. Hmm, I really need to plan my trajectories a little bit more. <laughs> ah, but wonderful failures. Good, I learned. Good for next time. So we're going to recover that debris, and let's go ahead and start buying some of these science nodes. So there you go, these engines will be rather nice to get myself into a nice high orbit. It looks like that's going to unlock in two days, 12 hours, and I want survivability, so I got some parachutes, and I've got some more science there, and that's it for my science. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and time warp. There you go, reconditioning and the tech. So there we go. Let's warp to basic rocketry and engineering 101, and I will do survivability, so that way... I can actually recover the science, and that's going to be in five days, which is no big deal. All right, so this would give us a lot of parts to potentially produce a much better rocket, or at least maybe not a better rocket, but something to recover. And five, four, three, two, one, done. Beautiful. Close the alarm, and let's see what we can build now. Come on. There we go. All right. So I actually think I'm going to keep this the same because just to keep myself organized, I will now, I think, I can add some science down here. So there's the two hot thermometer. There's two of those for balance purposes, although because they're so tiny, it's not really going to matter. Geiger counter, I can go ahead and transmit all that I want, but I really want to recover this. So I think I'm actually just going to make this just a sounding rocket and just go straight up. Although I don't, I do not know what the difference is between a sounding rocket and a rocket that you can shoot on an arc. So I'm going to go ahead and add these two there. I think that'll be more than enough. A little bit of part clipping, but uh, I'm happy with that. So, I think there we go. And since I've made some modification to this, this is now Rocket Alpha 2. 
Let's save that, and I'm going to go ahead and build two of these just in case one of them fails. Let's see, we're already 13 days according to the Quibble alarm clock system. I think we've collected quite a bit of science since then. Let's see, we've got these two rockets ready to roll out. I feel like I should have made three, but I can always make three later. But hopefully this will give me enough science to unlock another node or two once I can recover. Some more goody science. Let's make that, and roll out, and warp. Let's see, will this get me to daytime? No, this won't. And I would love to launch this in the daytime. I'll close that. Warp to morning. Oh, okay, two hours off. It's not too bad. All right, let's go ahead and launch Alpha 2 and see what happens. So I'm a little worried that if I can launch all stages straight up, I'm going to have too high of an apple apps and come down a little too fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch this just to the edge of space and not launch any more. There we go. Lots more science now. So I'm going to recover that. And I'm just going to go and transmit this science just in case this doesn't quite work. There we are, so far so good. Alright, so I'm going to risk time warping this straight up. There we go, alright, computer's handling it okay. Because every time I run OBS and I try to record anything, it lags really, really badly. Because I've had some rockets where I've got well over 100 parts and it launches just fine, no lag whatsoever, but whenever I run OBS it always slows down my computer by quite a lot. Oh, and it looks like I can get ready to cut the stage out here in just a second. And I'm going to spin stabilize it anyway, just in case, and at 150, and done. There we go. So just in case, I might be able to use this to slow my descent down. All right, transmit that, transmit that. Let's see, Geiger counter. I am going to save that. Mystery goo, go ahead and save this as well. I forgot to collect the science lower down, but uh, I'll come back down in a minute. And let's see, now I'm gonna keep that. Mystery goo. Let's go ahead and keep that. And I believe, according to this, no, need one more. And there we go. That's done for the mystery goo for the uh, upper atmosphere. Let's see how we can do for science up in low Earth orbit or low near space. So let's see. I've got a thousand meters per second. 1100 meters per second of delta V going up so hopefully when by the time I come back down and get to about 90 kilometers I'll launch that again and I'll be at almost a thousand but I might just come down launch back up come down and then launch back up transmit oh I should not have done that that was a mistake whoops let's just go ahead and keep that so glad I made a second one all right, so there we go. Let's come back down. And let's see, we're at 600 and, okay, 650 and rising, so we might be good. And, uh, oh, I forgot to arm the parachutes. Let's talk with the info. Altitude for 200, 700 is good. Copy to others, close, and let's arm that one and arm that one. There we go. All right, and I think this is actually going to work really well. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this and keep this as well. And hopefully I'll be able to save all the science. Oh, look at this. I am... So actually, I don't think this will burn up in the atmosphere anyway. But just in case, once I get to 1100, I will ignite these engines. I've actually never done this before, so I don't know if this is going to work. I've always just launched it on an arc and then just put some uh, heat shields around it so that way I can save everything. And uh, 
think, let me check far and see what it says, atmospheric density, nothing, so actually I think this is going to work really well. So I'm actually holding off on igniting this next engine. I mean, I'm above it, I'm still going to fall down, so I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Let's give it a shot. Slow that down. Uh, I'm a little off rotation there, but it's okay. 649 meters per second and going to 200. Yep, I actually think this will work really well. Well, it's really bugging me that that 11 baby sergeant motor is not, you know, getting decoupled from the rest of the ship. It's just kind of hanging on for dear life, as it will. There you go. I think I can actually time warp this. And actually, I think this will be good. This is going to save. And I'm going to wobble out of control. Lots of... Uh, Aerodynamic pressure's going on. Let me keep this science. There we go. And let's ignite this again. Slow us even further down. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. This is actually going really well. I did not think it was going to go this well. So actually, I could just fall all the way to Earth and just let it ignite, but I do want to get rid of this other engine. And there we go. Now my craft is just a little bit lighter. Wow, this worked out beautifully. I love this. This is going very, it's going swimmingly. How far away from the VAB? Oh, not too far, so yeah, uh, maybe less than a kilometer out. So that's good. The scientists don't have to walk all the way over. They don't have to walk too far to go get it. Send a guy on a truck. All right, let's hopefully these See, yep, they're both armed. That's good. Toggle info, so it should at 2100. And there they go. All right, this is saved. All right, this worked out much better than I thought it was going to. Oh, perfect. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. I'm going a little too fast. So let me cut one of these. There we go. Falling at 3.4, coming down nicely, beautiful. Oh, I could not have asked for a better, for a better launch. That went much better, other than, you know, wasting the mystery goo container. But we've got another rocket ready to go. So I think once I actually get these next series of liquid engines, I am actually going to see, if I believe I need about 14,000 or 15,000 meters per second of delta V just to actually get to the moon. Um, so of course if I just do that, either I can try for a free return trajectory or I can, uh, I'm just going to transmit a bunch of science home. I'm actually not too sure if uh, this Explorer probe, if the antenna is long range enough to reach the moon. Oh, but look at that. Oh, we've got 73 science total. That went perfectly. So, and I'm just going to go ahead and there's some more engines. That's perfect. And I've got 53 left over. And actually, I'm going to invest in some more science. So, because I really want the Science Junior to start collecting that, because that takes forever. Uh, and it's also going to have this uh, retractable parabolic antenna, which has a range of, let's see, 380 gigameters, which is more than plenty for the moon. So I definitely want that because I believe with the engines in the general rocketry mode, uh, yeah, these should provide more than enough to get me to the moon at least. I won't be able to land on the moon. I won't be able to actually you know, return from the moon, but it should be able to get a lot more science from there. So let's see, there's the VAB, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and launch the Alpha 2 and just collect a little bit more science, but this time I'm going to go over the shores and I'm actually going to try for an arc, see if I can actually get anything good. There we go, and let's launch this. All right. Wow, so this turned out to be a lot more science than I had anticipated on getting from that one launch. Oh, 
Here we go. So let's see. General Rocket Troop complete in nine days, which is more than enough. There we go. Let's launch that. Execute that. And let's start keeping this science, because this should provide more than enough. Although I think with the next rocket, before I start heading to the moon, I want to start collecting these Geiger counter readings so that way I can actually get all the science a little sooner. Because that way I can invest in more time. So by the time I've sent some rockets out to the moon, I'll be able to research some more nodes and hopefully get something out to Mars really quickly. Because I think the high, the antenna, that last node should be able to reach Mars. And then hopefully I'll be able to get something good there. But I'm a little worried that I don't have any decent enough engines because I really want the Astros engine, an unlimited amount of ignitions, which really helps. Although it's a low, uh, it's got a high ISP, which is what I need, but the unlimited ignitions, which is great. But just the uh, long burn times can be a pain. I've had some that are as long as I think 20 minutes. Although times four acceleration in Kerbal Space Program really helps out in those, but it's usually when I'm just stick it down, I'll let it burn, and then once it's done burning, then uh, you know just come back to the game. Maybe go watch some other YouTube videos on Kerbal Space Program, I guess. Um, yeah, let's see. This is going rather well. All right, so I really hope that once all is said and done, I will be able to recover this rocket out at sea. So maybe... Alright, I don't even know this is going to work. So this is A, testing the capabilities of the re-entry of just all of this equipment without a heat shield. Because if that's the case, if I can't recover, then it's going to be a, then it's going to be a while before I can get these heat shields to bring all the science back home. Go. Approaching 110 kilometers. Gonna aim way down. Put that at five. There we go. Yeah, see, I really want to recover, get this Geiger counter done. I need to add some more of those readings so I can collect more of the science. Because I've always had an issue collecting the Geiger counters in the science juniors, just because I've sent so many lot so many rocket launches just to collect a little bit of science. But hopefully I can have those running in the background and not bore everyone with those launches. But I think with these early rockets, I'm collecting just absolutely everything I can. I hope I can get to something a bit more interesting, like getting to Jupiter and exploring the moons, because that's that's always a lot of fun. Alright, there's that stage. Oh, I forgot to spin stabilize it. It's okay. Let's go ahead and ignite this. I don't think this is such a good idea because I'm really increasing the speed here. But what I do like is that I have started a very slow rotation. And I'm hoping that with persistent rotation, I can aim into the retrograde and slow myself down. And I guess while I have, let's see the time, and I'm still connected, I need to arm these parachutes. I always forget to do that. I need to save that as a preset. Let's see if that one's armed. There we go. So they are armed. Should be good. Now let's go ahead and collect this wonderful science. Oh, perfect. There we go. And I think that should be all of it. I hope that is all of it for near space. Oh, there we go. Looks like it stopped rotating, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and ignite these. Yep, that's speeding up. That was a bad idea. I probably just lost all this science. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Yeah, this is going to burn up in the atmosphere. I'm way too fast. Well, I guess I learned my lesson. So hopefully when I get some more engines, I'll be able to get some high space science and send that back home and get some heat shields as quickly as I can. So that'll really help out. There we go. Looks like the uh, parachutes are burning up. There they go. They're gone. Oh, there's one left. Oh, nope. 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 Ah, uh, okay. Well, made a little lower than I thought. I usually burn up at about 80 kilometers, but because I was going just slow enough. 
All right, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and uh, with whatever science that I have, if I have any left, go ahead and unlock a couple of nodes. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave this episode here. Um, go ahead and recover this debris. Let's see what else. I got eight science, so I got nothing. And I think, uh, let me just go ahead and time warp. There's reconditioning, nothing in the VAB, general rocketry, and basic science, which I really want. So I'm just going to go ahead and warp to basic science. If I can, no, general rocketry is going to finish first. Here we go. And there we go. So, so far it is February 11th, 1951. And so I think in the first couple of months of this here space program, I think it is rather well. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next episode.